Already this year, Huawei has really impressed us with the camera chops on the P20 Pro. That tri-lens snapper is an absolute delight. And now the Huawei Mate 20 Pro, this one here, also rocks a tri-lens sensor, except it's in this funky square configuration instead. However, the Mate 20 Pro has actually changed up the camera configuration from the P20 Pro. You now get an ultra-wide angle lens as that secondary snapper to give you a different view of the world. So to see how they stack up, I've taken lots of photo and video with both of these blowers, and I've also done a side-by-side -side with the Pixel 3 XL, which is one of the best smartphone snappers of 2018. And here is my full in-depth Mate 20 Pro camera comparison. And don't forget to hit subscribe and ding that notification bell for lots more on the Mate 20 and the latest grits mobile tech. Cheers! The major advantage that the Mate 20 Pro has over the other handsets here is that it's incredible flexibility. Both Huawei phones already have one over the Pixel 3 thanks to their telephoto zoom, which allows you to grab shorter shots of any subject from a distance. Particularly helpful for travel fans who love snapping bits of architecture and any shiz like that. The Pixel 3's digital zoom does a remarkably good job of capturing detail at a distance considering its disadvantage, but it can't quite keep up with Huawei's snappers. However, the Mate 20 Pro offers even more versatility than its sibling by replacing the P20 Pro's secondary monochrome lens with the new ultra-wide angle snapper. This is an absolute godsend when you're trying to capture something enormous like this bugger here, Durham Cathedral. Rather than spending ages trying to find an angle that works, you can just flip to that pulled out view and bosh, job done. The results are often quite dramatic and for lazy f***ers like me, it's a perfect solution. However, in ditching that monochrome lens, the Mate 20 Pro also slightly compromises when it comes to those detail levels. A lot of these comparison photos shot with the P20 Pro are sharper and cleaner when you view them back on a big screen or start to zoom in. It's quite a subtle difference thankfully and the Mate 20 Pro certainly doesn't disappoint. Those everyday shots still look great when you cast them up to your telly. With Huawei's AI mode active, the Mate 20 Pro and the P20 Pro capture more vibrant, generally attractive images than the Pixel 3. And that's because vivid colours like a bright blue sky for instance are really boosted to make them look absolutely bloody gorgeous. Of course the Pixel's more realistic results will pack serious appeal for anyone who demands accurate colour reproduction. But thankfully you can knock off that AI help at any point on both of these Huawei phones and manually tweak the colour capture. In everyday scenarios with the AI deactivated you get similar appealing results from all three of these phones. The Pixel 3 definitely handles strong light more capably however with zero oversaturation in my test shots. Occasionally the Mate 20 Pro and the older P20 Pro struggled in this area with blown out results. And in those HDR situations the Pixel can produce much stronger colours too. That said Huawei's excellent night mode can really help out when you're trying to shoot something dark against a bright background capturing more detail than the Pixel 3 can manage. Again, it's that flexibility and those manual controls offered by the Mate 20 Pro that really give it a leg up over the Pixel, as long as you're not afraid to stray beyond the full auto mode, of course. In lower light conditions, the Mate 20 Pro is clearly more advanced than the P20 Pro. I found that the latest Huawei handset captured more detail in almost every example, while colour reproduction is also stronger. The Mate 20 Pro does a fine job of replicating vibrant hues, something that the P20 Pro always struggled with in those darker scenes. In auto mode, it's a close run thing between the Mate 20 Pro and the Pixel 3. The Pixel actually wins more often than not when it comes to the clarity, with more detail on offer in these photos. But the Mate 20 Pro, like the P20 Pro before it, has an absolutely devastating weapon which destroys the Pixel, and it's that brilliant night mode. This captures a long exposure shot by hand, with bright superior results pretty much every time. The Pixel 3 phones are supposed to be getting their own night mode at some point of course, so we'll have to try this all once again once Google finally rolls that out. Although the Pixel 3 only rocks a single lens snapper, Google software smarts means that you get some pretty dazzling portrait mode results. In most instances, your subject silhouette is cleanly captured with some pleasing bokeh style background blurring. The Huawei phones do the job nicely as well, and with the Mate 20 Pro you get all kinds of funky customization. You can swirl the background or morph it into little weird heart shapes and all kinds of stuff. And you also get some studio lighted effects just like with the P20 Pro, although these often do a poor job of cleanly cropping you out. As for video, you can shoot full HD video at 30 or 60 frames per second on both Huawei phones, or bump right up to 4K for some impressively crisp footage. The focus can be a little softer at 60 FPS level, so I tend to stick with the Ultra HD setting on the Mate 20 Pro. Thankfully Huawei has fixed the biggest issue that I had with the older P20 Pro, which is the absolutely balls image stabilisation. If you walk and shoot at the same time with the Mate 20 Pro, the results are much smoother and a lot less likely to make you regurgitate your breakfast. That said, I did notice some occasional weird warping over at the forage of the screen when shooting at that 4K level, which hopefully will be sorted out pronto by Huawei. The Pixel 3 doesn't have a 60fps setting, but you can once again shoot video in either Full HD or 4K resolution. And again, the results are fantastic. Sharp capture, adapting to sudden changes in focus and lighting, and of course some silky smooth stabilisation. Top stuff. 
So basically all three of these phones will capture really nice looking home movies. But oh yes, the Mate 20 Pro does allow you to shoot video using that ultra wide angle lens as well, which is pretty freaking awesome. And that in a nutshell is how I reckon these three mighty smartphone snappers stack up. Do you love the Mate 20 Pro? Do you think I'm talking out of bollocks? Whatever your thoughts, definitely let us know in the comments down below. And don't forget to hit subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers guys, love you.